Hey guys, it's Jim. So we're back with part two with William Carlos Angulo, the uh, Jeff Award winning choreographer Jeez. for once. So how do you like it? <laughs> A little uncomfortable with that, but it was, and it was super cool. And you heard everybody go nuts because, you know, we were half the audience at the Jeff Awards. <laughs> we're all excited. Yeah. So, you know, how do you, well, let me ask this. I was going to ask you, uh, how do you know when you've got the right choreography? But even before then, I assume then, you know, you're sitting in during the uh, audition process. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, when you're doing that, what do you do to see if the actor can do some of the movements that you may have in mind? And what are you looking for? You know, because I assume you have input with Cordy as to right. who he's casting. What yeah, are you looking for, sure. for as a choreographer during sure. that process? Um, I, I look for people who are good physical storytellers, period. Um, and so to that end, you kind of, you know, Amber Mack always says auditions are the first part of the process. And I, I believe, like, that is gospel to me. And... And when you have a room full of people who want to be in the play, who are there auditioning for you, I think it's it's important to be like, okay, this is the beginning of our process together, and this is this is the place where we really start to figure out what the play is going to be. So um, doing a dance audition is really just like our chance to get to work together for the first time and see how what what our collaboration is going to be like in the rehearsal room and 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 how how we are going to build this thing together. Um, so, so to that end, um, it's, I, I have found it is far less useful um, doing things like ballet combinations and, and whatnot. I mean, I guess, you know, if, if, you're doing, if you're doing a play where ballet is going to be the language, um, then of course you need to do something ballet based. But I find that you get better results from people if you give them a physical story to tell and then walk them through it and then stand back and then watch them tell, tell a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, so that's, that is how I like to do auditions. Um, and then, you know, and then the rest of it is just politics. You know, like you, you, look, at, you look at all of the headshots on the table and then you, you start to figure out what the company might be and then it's a numbers game and it's uh, like okay if this person covers this person then that means that this person would be here and then like this would be the family and then that means you know and and then lord knows what happens after that but right and if somebody finally accepts the offer and if they don't and then oh gosh yeah that yeah, could throw off the mix for you guys totally, yeah 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 so you're at home, you're, you're working on uh, developing these numbers. Mm -hmm. So how do you know when you're like, yep, yeah, that's it, mic drop, I think I've found what's going to work. Never. Never. Yeah, no, that's not a thing, ever. That's why I just imagined no, him like, totally. yes, boom, oh, gosh, taking a no, break. No, I got no, this no. One. Um, it's, it, it, is, it is always a work in process, um, and, and it kind of never ends. Uh, and... One of the reasons I like working with Jim is that he he knows that and embraces it and affirms us in it as as we're in it. Is that he's like this is this is never going to be complete. Like we will never reach a point when we're like that is it. It is finished. Um, and because it's live theater and it's living and breathing every day, it's you can never expect for it to be finished ever. You are always if you're an actor in it, you are always going to be making new discoveries in it. You are always going to experience it differently day to day today. Um, and as the people sitting on the other sides of it, I, his big joke is that whenever we get to tech, I always hate everything that I've done. I hate 100% <laughs> of the things that I've done. And I tell my assistants, like, your number one job is to A, tell me I'm not crazy, and B, when we get to tech, don't let me start cutting the show apart because I will just pull out my machete and start just, like, getting rid of everything. Um, and and so I I know myself well enough to know that if I do best having I do best having a team around me, that's like no nope, this is what we set out to do and we're still pursuing that let's keep on pursuing this don't just start being like oh I hate it because I've been staring at it for so long. Um, where where do you find your inspirations for the pieces that you put together? I mean you know like obviously we haven't seen anything you've done for once but man. Mm -hmm. You had such a different take on West Side Story, and the numbers were so sure. cool and blew everybody away. Thank you, thank you. Where, where does it come from, man? The cast. It comes from the cast, you know, and uh, and with West Side Story and also with this, you know, a large, uh, like I was saying, you know, in an audition situation, like creating a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and... and um, that's doing doing that on a larger scale is what I am interested in doing and and engaging them in a way such that 
they have the freedom to tell their own stories. Um, and it's, it's difficult, it's, it, this show presents completely different challenges to that end than any show I've ever worked on. And, um, and I mean, like, I have, I have a lot of tricks, you know, I've got a lot of like, okay, here's, here's how we pull the story out of this moment. And then like, here's how, how we, how we carry this moment through its beginning, middle and end. Um, that doesn't quite work when you've got a company full of people who are holding instruments. So I am like back to the drawing board with this one, which is really cool. So, and, and kind of all of us who are working on the show, we are all sort of rediscovering our own processes and having to sort of like build this entire thing ground up, which is exciting and also terrifying. Um, but all of that to say my inspiration, uh, my inspiration is always the cast, um, the music and the cast for sure. Day one, uh, so when, when the first time all the actors really get together mm -hmm. and the creative team's in there and yeah. everybody gets to talk, including administrative staff, marketing, mm -hmm. blah, blah, everybody yeah, else. Yeah. Uh, you got up there and uh, you did had two super cool things that we all enjoyed. And, and one of them wasn't the headphones, but one of them was uh, something that uh, I think you recited from memory. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, uh, one of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I should say the the set that Jeff Kamek designed with Jim was very much based in this, um, you know, you know, or in, inspired by surrealist painters, um, and and sort of this idea that there's, you know, instead of looking at this big cluttered bar with all of this stuff and this big collage of, you know, all of the bottles and all of the artwork on the walls and all of the everything that you know an Irish bar would collect that instead we see the cleanliness and we see the clean lines and we see the way that the light cuts cuts all of these angles and sort of carves all of these things out. Um, and we turned, we turned from realism to surrealism. Um, and I, of course, you know, like I've, that's not a thing that has ever really occurred to me uh, to be a place to lead from choreographically. So I started doing my work on figuring out, you know, like what surrealism is and like what the inspiration is behind that. And I found all of these amazing quotes by Magritte. Um, my favorite one being, you know, just his definition of surrealism, which he says, surreality is simply reality that has not yet been detached from its mystery. And I love that because it implies that kind of everything that we see, touch, and feel has this has this sort of level of, of mystery to it or has things about it that have yet to be discovered. Um, and, and if you, you know, Magritte is the, he's the painter who did, did like the train coming out of the fireplace. Right. Um, and sort of seeing these extraordinary things happening in ordinary places and, and that is our play, right? It's this sort of ordinary place where extraordinary things happen. Um, and, and seeing all of these sort of everyday mundane things and people and blue collar people having these sort of extraordinary feelings that all of a sudden blossom, blossom out of this, out of the everyday mundane is a thing that I'm very much interested in, in harvesting out of the piece. Um, so that was why I shared that quote. The other thing you did, and I'll leave everybody with this, is you had a really interesting take when you were talking about choreography and the, the relationship between yourself and music and mm. movement and people around you. And, and you kind of challenged everybody in the room to do this. Yeah. And that was? Yeah, that was actually, that was actually Stephen Hoggett's um, call to action from, from, um, from the Frantic Assembly book. Frantic Assembly is their, is their um, company in the UK. And at the very end of his book, uh, of their book, they have like all of these do's and don'ts and it's it's actually like three pages of don'ts and then like a few do's um but one of the things they say to do is to put on your headphones and just walk to work and see the way that the world around you choreographs itself which is a thing that i've done since i was a kid and always loved to do um and i love i love that too and i shared that on the first day because because it implies that simply adding music to something mundane like walking to work can make something ordinary extraordinary. Um, and I think that that's very much a part of this play too. Well look, dude, you, you make things extraordinarily, extraordinary all the time. And so uh, we're looking forward to once. 
And we're going to let you get back because you're on lunch break right now and you yes. took the time to do this. But thanks, man. Thank you for coming and sharing all this. You're yeah, a fascinating yeah, no cat. And it was really cool to get to hang out with you. So ladies and gentlemen, William Carlos Angulo, uh, choreographer for once, come see it. We're opening in a couple weeks, which is uh, April 25th, which is the Wednesday's the first preview and then uh, opening night. Thank you again, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It. Thank you.